Bettina Ortiz Y. Menya was not accustomed to waiting. A former Miss Venezuela and Miss Universe runner-up. Of course, the exceedingly bronze strawberry blonde was these days the wife of Miami auto parts tycoon Herman Ortiz Y. Menya. And at every restaurant she chose to grace with her presence, she was always greeted with reverence and whisked to the exact table she desired. She wanted to sit on one of the comfy orange canvas director's chairs and stare out at the gently lapping turquoise waters while eating her kale Caesar salad. But there was a large noisy group taking up the entire terrace and they didn't seem in much hurry to leave. Bettina fumed as she glared at the tourists happily savoring their lunch in the sun. Look how tacky they were. The women overly tanned, wrinkled, and saggy, none of them properly lifted or botoxed. She felt like walking up to their table and handing out her dermatologist business cards. And the men were even worse, all dressed in all rumpled shirts and shorts, wearing those cheap straw hats sold at the trinket shop on Dunmore Street. Why did such people have to come here? The three and a half mile long paradise with its pristine pink sand beaches was one of the best kept secrets in the Caribbean. A haven for the very rich, filled with quaint little wood houses painted in shades of sherbet, charming bouquets, cheek ocean front mansions turned into inns, and five star restaurants to rival St. Bart's. Tourists should have to take a style exam before being allowed to set foot on this island. Feeling that she had been patient long enough, Bettina stormed into the kitchen, the fringe on her crocheted Pucci caftan top, shaking furiously as she made a beeline for the woman with a shock of a pixie cut bl blonde hair manning the main stove. Julie, honey, what's the dealio? I've waited more than 15 minutes for my table. Bettina sighed to the owner of the restaurant. Sorry, Bettina, it's been one of those days. The party of 12 on the terrace showed up first just before you did, replied as she handed off a bowl of spicy conch jelly to waiting server. But the terrace is your prime spot. Why on earth did you let those tourists take up all that space? Well, that tourist in the red fishing cap is the Duke of Glencora. His party just boated over for Windmire. That's his royal horseman you see moored off to the coast. Isn't it the most handsome sailboat you've ever seen? I'm not impressed by big boats. You know me. Bettina huffed, although secretly she was rather impressed by the people with big titles. From the kitchen window, she surveyed the party assembled on the terrace with new eyes. These Aristo-British types were such a strange breed. Sure, they had their several suits and their heirloom tiaras, but when they traveled, they looked so painfully frumpy. It was only then that Bettina noticed three tan, well-bit men in fitted white t-shirts and black Kevlar pants sitting at the end of the adjacent table. The guys weren't eating, but sat watchfully, sipping glasses of seltzer water. And I assume that's the Duke's security detail? They couldn't be more obvious. Don't they know that we're all billionaires here on Berlin? And this isn't even how we roll. Bettina tutted. Actually... Those bodyguards belonged to the Duke's special guests. They did a whole sweep of the restaurant before the party arrived. They even searched my walk-in freezer. See that Chinese fellow seated at the end of the table? Bettina squinted through her Dior ecstasy sunglasses at the portly, balding, 70-something Asian man dressed in a nondescript white short-sleeved golf shirt and gray trousers. Oh, I didn't notice him. Am I supposed to know who it is? That's Alfred Chang, Julie said in a hushed tone. Bettina giggled. Ugh. He looks like a chauffeur. Doesn't he look like that guy that used to drive Jane Winman around in Falcon Crest? Julie, who was trying to focus on searing a cut of tuna to perfection, shook her head a tight-lipped smile. From what I hear, that chauffeur is the most powerful man in Asia. What was his name again? 